and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys. And what did you make there of that incredible clash? What did you make of that mouth-watering encounter there? So much entertainment in Barca versus Dinamo Kiev. Who are we kidding? It was terrible. Because honestly, guys, that was not the most entertaining game that you're going to see this season. It was not the best performance that you were going to see this season. But what I would like to say before we get into before we get into what we should have done better, you know, what we could have done more, what I want to say is three massive points. We won by a goal to nil. It was the Gerard Piquet goal. Again, we're going to come on and talk about that. But what is important right now is the points that we have on the board finally in the Champions League. We have a win. It could be huge, but let's talk about the whole game. Because as you can see here, Ronald Koeman did make, you know, a change or two coming into this game. And I wasn't all too happy, I've got to say, with the starting lineup, mainly because it was led there by Luke de Jong in the number nine role. Serginho Des did play for the first half in that right wing role. Mingetha came in at right back. I was happy to see that change there from Ronald Koeman. But like I say, Luke de Jong was causing me some concern there, seeing him in and Ansu Fati on the bench. But what Barca did do quite well is that they started the game with a little bit of pace. I wouldn't say that it was tremendous pressure from the word go, but we did actually start the game okay. Jordi Alba put a really, really good ball into the box. Des had a really good chance in front of goal there with a header. Probably should have scored. And I think if we'd have scored early, if we'd have scored really early in this game, it could have been very, very different indeed. But I do want to point out Jordi Alba. I think Alba in this game had a fantastic match. One of the best players out there today, constantly putting really dangerous balls in. He was the driving force behind our goal. And I did think that Alba was a threat down that side because again it did seem as though especially in that first half like the plan from Koeman was get the ball in the box get the ball there to Luke de Jong and I don't really understand coming off the back of what we did so well on Sunday why you change all of that around then and just basically go back to crossing. Because although Luke de Jong did indeed get our first shot on target in the Champions League this season, it was 20 minutes in, they worked the goalkeeper with a shot towards the top right-hand corner. It was quite a comfortable save, though, and the goalkeeper there wasn't put under too much pressure. But I want to talk about de Jong's headers, because honestly, when he was brought in on loan, what I thought, and I think what we all thought was, OK, he's got one job. If the ball is in the air, if there's aerial battles to be won, if there's chances in front of goal with his head... He's going to put them away. He's going to grab a few goals there by headed goals. But the guy doesn't hit the target. He had three headers there, three point-blank headers in that first half. He was inside the area, great chances to score, did not hit the target with one of them. He was putting them wide, putting them over. The guy can't even make the goalkeeper work with his head. That's literally your only purpose. And Luke de Jong out there again, I don't want to jump on this guy. I don't want to keep kicking him while he's down. But again, he looks like a player who's won a competition to play at Barca and not somebody who deserves to be here especially in a Champions League game. But one thing that I would especially say is that Barca had the majority of the ball right throughout the game. We thought we dominated possession. It was one of those games, actually, where we were territorially, constantly in the opposition's half. And we didn't really feel too much pressure from Dinamo right throughout the game. But... It was all just a bit flat. And I don't really know whether that's a case there of the players being a little bit flat today. If there's some sort of reasoning for that. I also look at the crowd today. That again does concern me. Just 45,000 people inside the camp. Now, for most of that game, considering this was an important Champions League game for us, it was virtually silent. Some of the biggest cheers there were when Ansu Fati warmed up, when Aguero came on. Other than that, there was not a lot of noise, not a lot of feeling. You compare that, for instance, to what we saw at Atletico Madrid against Liverpool last night. They were absolutely bouncing there inside the Wanda. We're not having that kind of atmosphere right now at Barcelona, but I thought one thing we did do well throughout the game was, particularly in midfield, I think Gavi, De Jong did their jobs really, really well. They put high pressure. They were winning the ball back as quickly as they possibly could, and we did keep turning the ball over nice and quickly and getting back in possession, but we didn't do an awful lot with it, and that is why I was so, so glad that on 36 minutes, Gerard Piquet finally 
gave us that goal. And it was an absolutely massive goal for us. You cannot overstate here how big this could be in our season. Again, like I say, it was Jordi Alba with a brilliant cross into the box. But what a finish. What a finish there from Gerard Piquet. I honestly believe this guy could do a better job there at centre forward for us. He could be a very, very good emergency player. We've seen it in the past that Piquet, in these kind of moments, he's got the skills to pay the bills. Brilliant, brilliant finish. And I was happy for Piquet. We all know about the sacrifices that he's made for this club. We all know about the difficulties that we've had this season. Piquet, of course, one of those to always try and give his all for this club. And it was a big, big goal, like I say, celebrating there, giving the fans something to cheer about. Heading into half time, Barca led Dinamo by just a single goal. And I think obviously then when you do look at the second half, Ronald Koeman, to his slight credit there, he did actually make the changes pretty quickly and Sufati came on for the second half immediately. Luke de Jong went off. Obviously no surprise there that de Jong was the one substitute. It was an interesting change though that Mingetha went off and then Coutinho came on, which basically meant that Dest went back to right back. He wasn't playing as a winger anymore. Coutinho then slotted in behind Memphis and Ansu and it became a much more narrow shape in that second half with Dest and Alba providing the width there but only from full back and there was a really good chance basically the game should have been over we should have ended the game there in that second half it was Ansu Fati Barca again good with the pressure winning the ball back nice and high up the field Ansu he should make it count honestly you would say to him here at the end of the day probably lay that ball off he tried to be maybe a little bit too clever he tried to do the spectacular would have been great if it went in but obviously there we wanted to make sure of those points but like I say there was chances Coutinho had one that just went over the bar. He was close there to two goals in two games. That would have been really, really good for him. Aguero came on, like I say, 15 minutes that he got today out there on the field, which would be very, very beneficial for him, especially ahead of the Classico. But I think overall, guys, what we saw out there today, I think from the fans right the way down to the players, was a very cautious team, and especially Ronald Koeman. I think there it was a very, very cautious setup in that second half. We didn't really commit too many members going forward. We knew that 1-0 was going to be enough for what we need. Needed. But at Barca, I don't think we'll ever accept that. I don't think we'll ever just sit back and say, okay, we'll take those points. Because yes, I'm very, very happy here that we won this game. I'm happy here that we can continue, at least for now, in the Champions League. But we want more than this. We're not just going to sit back and accept the 1-0 against Dinamo Kiev. We shouldn't be having these problems in these games anyway. Let's face it here, guys. This is not a game that should be making us nervous as Barca fans. Barca players out there, they shouldn't be nervous. Yes, we had to win this game. But come on. This is a match that you should be grabbing there by the scruff of the neck. Winning by a few goals. And today was not good enough from this team. What I would also say as well is, look at ahead now to the weekend. What kind of mood are the fans going to be in what kind of mood here are the players going to be in going into that Real Madrid game they of course played Ukrainian opposition last night in Shakhtar Donetsk they won by an abundance of goals they are certainly going to be going into the Classico more confident than we are we're going to be at home but the other question I'd ask is how many fans are going to be inside the stadium because absolutely on Sunday you can guarantee we're going to need a boost we are going to need a helping hand from somewhere we need the fans to turn up we need noise we need atmosphere we cannot have these kind of flat performances repeating and repeating and repeating and of course from the side of Ronald Koeman you've got to give the crowd something to shout about you've got to give the crowd something there to involve themselves with because playing cautious football you know retreating accepting their a narrow win that is not going to cut it at this club we expect more we we want more. And although tonight we've got the win, there is plenty more and so much more to come from this team. But of course, guys, like I say, the important thing tonight, of course, is going to be about getting those points on the board. This is, as of right now, the table as it looks. Of course, we and Dinamo have played one game more. Benfica and Bayern are actually going to be playing now. They're playing as we speak right here. So here's to hoping that Bayern beat Benfica and hopefully beat them by a few goals because Barca are now on three points. Our next Champions League game will be against Dinamo. We will need another three points then. Bayern again will play Benfica. Benfica, and then it could be a crucial meeting at the camp now between Barca and Benfica to decide who progresses. Please let me know if you have hope of progressing. Do you think now that Barca can go on and get out of this group? Or are you looking at that performance tonight? Are you still concerned? Are you worried there that we may not have enough? And especially there looking ahead to Sunday. How are you feeling ahead of facing Real Madrid? Let me know all those thoughts down below, guys. I will, of course, see you soon. For all of the build-up to that massive, massive game, we've had back-to-back -back wins over the past few days. 
but we still need more. I will see you soon, and I thank you indeed for watching today, even though the game wasn't great. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Barca. Uh -huh.